there is a possibility that the judge, upon his whim, could say, have those people arrested, and we all know the guys with the guns and the badges aren't going to say, gee, that doesn't make sense. They'll do what they're told. <laughs> so from day one, we decided, the people that I was doing this with, mm -hmm. that if we are told to leave the grounds, we will leave the grounds. We will go to the sidewalk mm -hmm. outside the grounds. We will stay as close as we can without... So, so I guess part of it is being, being willing to say, okay, if I don't want to get arrested, then these guys control that turf. Get off that turf. Okay, hello everybody. I'm here with John Connell. He is a really neat guy. He's the pastor of the Peaceful Assembly Church in Grafton, New Hampshire, which is a hotbed of Free State Project stuff. Uh, welcome, John. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm kicking butt. I'm doing great. Great to hear you again. Uh, it's it's always a pleasure to speak with you, John. It's been a while. Yeah, we, uh, I think we first met after Porkfest um, in 2010 at the, at the Canning's house. Okay, yeah, that would have been over at Hoyt Farm here, at the, up here in the middle of nowhere, Grafton, New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a little get-together there, and um, you know, we stopped by, and, uh, and you and I chatted for a little while about your plans for the, uh, for the church. I think this was, like, right when you bought it, or right before? That would have been, I guess, probably uh, very, very close to right before I was going to buy it, if my memory is right. Mm -hmm. I passed papers on this place. Uh, let's see, it would have been the, the last week of June, and then opened the doors to all peaceful people on the first Sunday in July. So mm -hmm. a matter of days before we opened the doors up. And the reason that I think it was probably a little bit before, because if it was after, I think, that, you know, you would have been here. Mm -hmm. You know, we would, have, we would have come over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, so uh, what is the Peaceful Assembly Church there in Grafton, New Hampshire? What's that all well, about? Well, the Peaceful Assembly Church is uh, the result of a long journey from childhood having religion forced on me, which really doesn't work, mm -hmm. and then going on a kind of a mission of searching to see what made sense, and then eventually kind of nothing made sense because I began to become agnostic and then even atheist because I thought if there was a God that God wouldn't allow what happens in his name. And there's been a lot of death and destruction. Most of the death and destruction on the planet's in the name of government and in God's name. But then I came to realize, wait a minute, I'm blaming God for what man does. I need to knock that off. And so I backed off from the atheism and said, I should just relax, be agnostic. It was a little bit arrogant for me to be saying that I know there's no God, so just cool it and relax. And if things change, then nothing bad's going to happen to me. Mm -hmm. And then I found really deep forgiveness. I had studied forgiveness for about 30 years, and I was real wow. good at it, And uh, except for a couple of things. So I was kind of like a wounded healer by then, because I had struggled with holding on to some. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, let's see. Oh, so I lost my job of about 30 years, and then I never had any anger, depression, frustration over that. I just kind of looked like my life is going to change. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was having this enormous spiritual awakening because I was just forgiving everything. Anything that was trying to get me, I kind of forgave it. <laughs> well, all of a sudden... The historic building in the center of Grafton, this beautiful 1798 church building, went on the market. I liquidated my 401k, and I said, God is telling me to do this. And even though I don't know how to do it, God says, the way you do it is by putting one foot in front of the other, and then <laughs> things will start to happen. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid. And so I just moved on it. I, I liquidated the 401k and uh, just bought the property, and then uh, within days, uh, we were thinking that, uh, and Russell Canning was up here helping me, mm -hmm. and we kind of looked at it and said, well, we're not ready to open, and we could say that next week, and we could say that next month, and you could keep tidying things up for six months or a year, and so really being ready is when you 
say you are ready. So we said, let's say we're ready. And within days, we opened the doors to all peaceful people. Mm -hmm. So uh, the mission of the Peaceful Assembly Church is to foster peace as prescribed by God, which was the thing that caused all my frustration that I was thinking all the war and destruction that was done in God's name. So I said, well, I think God wants us to find peace. Let's work on that. So the church became open to anybody of any faith, no faith, or anything in between. Mm -hmm. And the idea would be to find what we have in common rather than what do we have to fight about. And then my personal mission, aside or in, in, in cooperation with the church mission, is to teach forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people... Um, well, our culture and, and media and everything tells people when you have a problem to fight about it and resist it and right. I get a, into that. And it's really unnecessary, but the conditioning causes people to forget. Forgiveness is actually quite easy. And, I'll, and just for the listeners, I'll give the basic bottom line where to begin. Uh, well, it begins with a willingness. But my mentor would talk about, it's hard to forgive the guy that punches you in the nose, so don't worry about forgiving the guy that punches you in the nose. When you're walking across the room and you trip on the cat, you get mad at the cat, try forgiving the cat, mm -hmm. right? Work on the little things, and you'll get better at it. And for, for a while, you might not be able to forgive the guy that punches you in the nose, but maybe you could forgive the person that yelled at you. <laughs> and then you know, you'll get better. It's like anything you practiced. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what's been happening, and that's been like the pure mission here at Peaceful Assembly Church to teach peace and inner and outer peace through forgiveness mm -hmm. and compassion, love, kindness, understanding, that sort of thing. Uh, we're fiercely independent, and uh, the government would like us to do a lot more paperwork and my big mistake was not forming an organization, perhaps, in the beginning. I bought it in my name. Mm -hmm. So they look at it like, well, you live there, so you're just trying to hide and evade taxes or that kind of thing. And I said, no. I went to the Select Drugs meeting, and I said, you know, you guys, if you go to there, you'll, you'll see the building. It says, hello, I'm a church, and I'm here telling you my background and what my intentions are. And it really is a church, mm -hmm. and that you, my neighbors, can come here anytime, and from inside the building, you'll also see what happens here. It's church. So That's excellent. Uh, so at this point, uh, the government continues to threaten to take the church from me because I won't pay taxes. I think churches should not be in bed with the government and be giving them money. So God told me to not be afraid in the beginning, and he continues to tell me to not be afraid and a friend of mine has an online game where it's all about battles and taking stuff. And I, so when the bad guys come and steal your stuff, once they, so normally everybody stays and fights, but you can tell they're going to win. Right. I say, well, why stay and fight? What would happen if, when you see the bad guys approaching, then you just give all your stuff to your neighbors, your friends, people who haven't threatened or hassled you? And he said, well, you'll go to the rim, just like as if you fought them and lost. So I said, well, why fight? This is the thing. Why, why fight all this stuff? Because there's nothing really to be afraid of. So I just, uh, the, I looked, I moved every time the government had given me a threatening notice. Mm -hmm. Whatever the earliest date was, I perceived that and told others that that would be the date that I would move on as if that was the I, I didn't want to fall. I wanted to err on the side of being early as opposed to late, of course. Right. So I moved it as thinking the first possible time I could do something really bad would be August 1st of this year. So I said, before August 1st, I'm giving this away. So I've given the property to a voluntary association. They're going to be a board of directors, other people get involved. Uh, the mission may not be quite as pure as when I'm flying solo. I understand that cause be, because I make all the decisions and, and I have complete autonomy. Mm -hmm. Now I've given up all control. I've decided I don't want to be on the board of directors. I don't want to control it. I will continue to serve. I'll serve at their pleasure. So that means I'll continue to be minister. I do counseling to help people with some problems, uh, 
whatever, conflict mm-hmm. resolution, forgiveness, and this sort of stuff. And uh, I'm the groundskeeper. So August 1st came, and I said it was getting uncomfortably close. Uh, we got somebody to draw up paperwork. I gave it away. And uh, so on August 1st, guess what? I continued doing exactly what I was doing as if I was still the owner. Um, I'm doing the mission that God told me to do. And That's excellent. And one of the things that I that I really liked uh, that I've seen from you is, you know, in the libertarian community, we have this flag, um, you know, the, the don't tread on me flag, mm-hmm. right? But you, yeah. you have made a flag that's um, a different color. It's purple and white, and it says, please don't tread on others. Right. <laughs> and that, 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 little... that about sums up, you know, it's it's that kind of like mirror image almost but but it, the 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 difference in focus is everything really. I'll tell you how that uh, that evolved. So uh, in in the in the liberty movement, we you know we some people think we're all you know all the same, which is impossible. Your brothers and sisters aren't even the same, and your mom and dad aren't the same. So to think that we all are is a little funny. But mm-hmm. that's the way people are. Mm-hmm. But we also have differences, and sometimes people, oh, you ruin it for the rest of us. <laughs> you know, one guy does act- activism different than the other. People poke fun at each other, and sometimes it's, uh, sometimes it can be harsh. But some of us like to have a sense of humor about things, mm-hmm. and so the idea originated with kind of making fun in in a friendly way. So the traditional, you know, American Revolution had the the rattlesnake. Don't tread on me. And the mm. rattlesnake, of course, is the implied threat, or else. Right. And in the liberty movement, there's one with the porcupine. Don't tread on me. Well, the porcupine is or else. And I thought, I want to make a yellow banner, and it will have, don't tread on me, but just above, no implied threat. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, because purple's the color for spirituality, and that this church is open to everybody, we went with purple for the color of the church, and so I went from the idea of a yellow banner to purple. And then I thought, hey, wait a minute. Everybody gets the don't tread on me part. <laughs> what people forget is, what about others? Right. So I decided I'm going to put don't tread on others. And then I decided I'll add please before <laughs> I did the first actual hard copy of the painting. Uh, I added please, and some of my friends said, Geez, you're really getting par- carried away with that peace thing, aren't you? I said, exactly, <laughs> that's the point. And so now, in the parking lot, I've painted it. Uh, essentially, well, almost all the pavement on the grounds here is made less than a third left is, uh, that doesn't have paint yet. Mm-hmm. But 40 by 80, I've painted that banner in the parking lot mm-hmm. so that when Google Earth goes by, there's the message for the world. Brilliant. Right here in Grafton Center, and if people did uh, Google Earth, Grafton Center, Grafton, New Hampshire, the pin, that little bubble pin they have, mm-hmm. is right on the street in front of the fence. So all the wonderful artwork for peace that's been done here is not yet on Google, mm-hmm. but eventually they're going to come by and take some pictures, and it's going to look <laughs> a, a lot different than it used to. Brilliant. Yeah, you should, uh, you know, the Free State Project sells the, the yellow flags with the porcupine. Yeah, I you know I think you should really look into selling your version of it um, because I, I think it, it really is cool and I really like the the turnabout the you know the way of reversing the message. Now, when you mentioned selling it, uh, I've had several people ask, "Did you copyright that idea?" Uh, and I said, "Well, no." I said because copywriting it. I said first of all, that would involve the government. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that. I said, but secondly, well, that might kind of restrict people from using it. I said, you know, but I said, I'm glad that you asked about copywriting. I said, because you know what I might copyright? All my bad ideas. I want to restrict <laughs> people from taking those and using them. <laughs> so, uh, John, so you, you, so we're talking about jury nullification activism. And basically, can you explain in just a, a few sentences what, you know, for those of our listeners who are new to the idea of jury nullification, and it's also called jury independence or jury rights or a fully informed jury. What is that exactly? Okay, so uh, I can I like to call it juror information outreach, uh, and I get started with the fully informed jury association back in ninety or ninety one when it began, and the idea was the traditional role of a juror 
is to protect their neighbor from the government. Mm -hmm. Now, there are occasionally bad people that we want to perhaps punish or, or put away for a while or whatever. People have varying degrees of what they want to do with that. But that should be very rare. Uh, one of the founding fathers said that uh, it's better that uh, ten guilty people go free than that one innocent person go to jail. Right. So if you take that from a liberty perspective, well, you know, that founding guy was talking about, you know, following the law. But now the laws have grown so, you know, the stuff they write on paper is so big that they have a law for everything. And it, probably the majority of people in prison in this country uh, are in there without having ever actually heard anybody. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty absurd to lock people up for that or to punish them for doing what, you know what, they told us when we grew up that in the evil countries, they had crimes against the state. Right. That's, these were the countries they said were so bad we had to have wars with them. Mm. And one of the big things was there was a crazy thing called crimes against the state. Well, that's what they're doing here. Mm-hmm. And, 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 this, and this country has more people in prison than anywhere else on the planet. So the juror's role is to protect that, protect the accused, and there's a lot of tricky things that the government does to make it so that the jurors will convict. But the role of the juror is to protect their neighbor from the government, first and foremost. Mm. And that the jurors in, in the juror outreach movement is to inform people of that right, and I like to say responsibility, mm-hmm. uh, to judge the law as well as the fact. Mm-hmm. So uh, I used to, when I did... Uh, I used to do some cable TV shows and some some interviews and that sort of stuff. I do less of that now. But I used to like to try to to hit on two things, which were kind of traditional left or right in that little paradigm, which really doesn't work, but people perceive it, so I can use that a little bit. So something kind of on the left, I would say. So if there's some kid with a bag of grass and he gets caught with the grass, does it make sense to put this kid in jail at all? He hasn't hurt anybody. He... Um, and, mm-hmm. and the other thing is it costs us all money to put these people in jail. It right. destroys their lives. And so that would be kind of a left angle. So it's the drug war type of stuff. At least it used to be kind of left. Hmm. And then on the right, I used to say on a self-defense issue, if somebody broke into your house and you defended yourself or you defended your child or your wife or, or they defended you, whatever it might be, and you went beyond whatever your regional, your little area, whatever what they wrote down on paper, saying the extent to which you may defend yourself, mm-hmm. if you went beyond that, then they could throw you in jail. And I would say, if I'm sitting on either of those juries, I say, you go home today. Right. You, didn't, you didn't do anything. You didn't digress against anybody. And mm-hmm. we don't belong to lock people up who haven't heard of us. Right. Or, have not addressed. Self-defense is a different issue because some people, I, personally I'm a practicing pacifist, but I also recognize as a living organism I have a, a right to defend myself if I choose to, and that goes all the way. Right, and and in some places, you know, taking perhaps England as the extreme, um, you know, any kind of defense, uh, you know, can, is, can often get you charged with a serious crime, and, you know, it's a little bit out of control. And I don't know how their uh, jurors are, you know, what they do over there, but the whole juror nullification uh, idea comes out of the Magna Carta. Mm-hmm. And this, goes, this is an ancient, uh, and even, even before that, if you get into the history, the big history of jurors, it's always been to protect the accused from right. the government. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, sometimes it could even be in a civil case to protect the accused from their neighbor. So now if you live in a really litigious society and somebody comes over, let's say, for example, uh, somebody goes into somebody else's property, a store, for uh, say, and uh, they, you know, they trip. And, uh, and then instead of calling the doctor, they call the lawyer <laughs> and say, how much money can I get out of the property owner? Well, how about fixing the injury and getting on with your life? But sometimes it, the jurors, when they hear that story, they should be on alert that the person who fell, you know, maybe that was an accident, but accidents happen, and we don't have to punish people for accidents. Right. But to try to, so even in civil cases, this, the jurors are supposed to be the conscience of the community. Hmm. This is why we have jurors 
if it was not the conscience, if it was all based on facts and what's the law and that sort of stuff, then we could put all this information into a computer and the judge could hit, you know, enter, and he could spit out the verdict. <laughs> Render his and verdict. And say, we know what happened. And, but the jurors have consciences, and this is where... Uh, this this is where the government is trying to squish this uh, this power this authority away from the jurors because uh, they've done it in some states where they go from twelve to a panel of six jurors because they're they're wanting to to squish out the possibility that anybody is going to say because here's the other thing mm-hmm. it only takes one juror to free somebody right. it's intended to be enormously difficult. The government doesn't like that, and they don't want us to know this stuff. And there's a whole big thing, which probably isn't for today, but the grand jurors need to wake up because their role is similar also. Mm-hmm. To take a look and investigate the government. So um, so you have done jury nullification activism before, and uh, as, I, as have I. And, you know, a lot of times, for example, Julian Heichlin, who who I've done activism with, and myself as well, and also others have been have come under a lot of um, persecution because of this. And there are you know videos, inc- including some that I have put up there, of uh, people being threatened and arrested for engaging in this kind of activism. And uh, I think it's had a bit of a chilling effect, which I would like to um, defrost. You know, so you're a person who is engaged in this activism without getting arrested. How did you yeah. do that, John? So it's 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 accurate to say I've never been arrested for any of this uh, sort of activist activity, mm-hmm. and I believe that. So uh, at the beginning of September, there is the National uh, Jury Rights Day, and so back I guess I would have been ninety one. There was some talk about as we approached the doing this, going on to tr- uh, on to. Uh, their property of the you know the the court property um, some judges will claim authority to hold people in contempt anywhere on those grounds that does anything he doesn't perceive as serving his interest mm-hmm. or the court that they like to call it the court's interest mm-hmm. so there was the danger that if you are on those grounds there is a possibility that the judge upon his whim could say have those people arrested and we all know the guys with the guns and the badges aren't going to say, gee, that doesn't make sense. They'll do what they're told. <laughs> so from day one, we decided, the people that I was doing this with, mm-hmm. that if we are told to leave the grounds, we will leave the grounds. We will go to the sidewalk mm-hmm. outside the ground. We will stay as close as we can without... So, so I guess part of it is being, being willing to say, okay, if I don't want to get arrested then these guys control that turf, get off that turf, mm-hmm. back out a little further. And if, they, you know, and if they threaten further, then to back off further. So you have to be willing to, to give that ground. And it's also a legitimate thing to, 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 to not give ground and to be arrested and to make an issue. But if you're choosing to not be arrested, don't be afraid to give ground, because your mission, if your mission is not to go to jail, then don't go to jail. Right. If you want to go to jail, then there's ways to do that. And that's a guerrilla guerrilla tactic as well. Not guerrilla as in monkey, but guerrilla as in like a guerrilla army. You know, you don't uh, stand and, and fight, you know, on the front lines in perfect formation like the British did in the Revolutionary War times. You, you, you know, when the, fo- when the superior force comes, you melt away. And when they leave, you know, you come back. And it's that kind of flexibility and I think that kind of flexibility is, um, you know, it's, there's a complementary thing going on with the kind of kinds of things that you talk about, your spirituality, where, um, you know, you have to be flexible with reality. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, yes. So I refer to it as I don't want to harden against whatever attacks me. Mm-hmm. I soften to it. Mm-hmm. And it's, some people might think of it like a balloon, if you squeeze it. Well, if it doesn't give, then it would just pop. But if it squeezes a little bit, you know, it will move. Or, you know, uh, in, I don't know if it's a Zen saying or elsewhere, you know, the tree that doesn't bend will soon break. Right. 
kind of stuff. So, like the bamboo trees, uh, when it's when it snows, they bend. But yeah. uh, but other kinds of trees, when it snows, they break because they don't bend. Right. Mm-hmm. And part of this is uh, when you mentioned the, uh, so it can be very difficult for people, and I think it would for me it's easier with the spiritual angle of the forgiveness because when these people come against you, it's it's kind of natural to get mad about that. Mm. But what do you do with that anger? Don't you know? My mentor would talk about when people can anger you, they can control you. It's then, very you true. Know, and if and if they can get you mad enough, that then you stop mouthing off to them or doing that kind of stuff. Well, it, 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 you play winning. right into their hands. Right, they're winning. And if there's any, you know, n- not no good's going to come of that because mm-hmm. uh, they will feel justified in their behavior. Onlookers will see it as you're a troublemaker. Uh, so yeah, it's be willing to be willing to yield to that. But like I said, it's a legitimate thing to also stand your ground if you if part of what you want to do is to bring. Uh, you know, if you want to do that, but b- b- be prepared. If you if you want to go to jail, that's that's one thing. But don't be going there if you don't want to, because most people have a busy life and they got productive things to do. Right. Um, so what in so, general? Uh, what what is your strategy? You know, when you go to you know, how do you pick the place where where you're going to hand out the information, or and you know, what is your general strategy? You know, think think of a person who's completely new. And they hear about this, and they're like, "Hey, that is really cool. That is so powerful, and you know, I can I can make an impact here." But but how do I do it? You know. Okay, so I think if 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 somebody's brand new, what I would say just for uh, the easiest stuff to do would go to uh, fullyinformedjury.org, and they have uh, media and brochures uh, button there that you can click on, and it bring down all the brochures, and there's a good variety. I tend to like the the general ones. There's some that maybe like uh, that you might hand out like at a garden rally or that uh, at the hemp rally or that kind of stuff. I like the more general one. There's a true false brochure which I think is really good. Mm-hmm. There's another one, the American Jury Institute, which is on there. It's a four four, four page uh, fold, and uh, that one's very uh, heavy on the text, but it's very very good. Mm-hmm. So anyway, whichever variety people are comfortable with. Pick what the one that, that, that they like that, that represents them, maybe that 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 they can uh, talk to people because occasionally people will want to talk. Generally, you'll get people to take the information and they just move on. So whatever you give them, there's a little bit in the community they talk about. Well, should we have the the more text or less, you know, more pictures or that kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, that's a good argument to have. But it, it, I think whatever one is comfortable with from a from a source that knows, you know, here here in New Hampshire, there's the uh, uh, nhjury dot com or dot org. I've got nhjury will get you there anyway. And and they or we have uh, a New Hampshire centric brochure. So mm-hmm. whatever someone's comfortable with, you can go out and find a place to go. So if you are wanting to reach now, here's a, here's a little trick also, and it plays into uh, not getting arrested. Mm-hmm. It plays into me being comfortable, and it's very true. Some people might think, oh, you're being tricky and you're playing a little game here. So when I decide I'm going to go to the courthouse, I think that's a good place to go to inform the public. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am wanting to inform jurors, but I truly do want to inform everybody going into that building. So some of the guys we've done it with up here in New Hampshire, they like to say to people when they're coming in, are you here for jury duty today and give them a pamphlet? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're asking everybody that. I don't do that. I I like to say, here's some jury information for you today. And they may say, here's one funny case where where the woman said, oh, I'm not here for jury duty. I'm here for, I'm here to prosecute the case. (laughs) (laughs) And I said, well, maybe you should have this information anyway. And then I reach in my other pocket, (laughs) out of my back pocket, because I keep a couple of these available. Don't take the plea. And I gave her one of those, and I say... (laughs) You might want to read this one, too, because we're planning on giving you, and I do the finger quotes, we're going to give you some more business. <laughs> <laughs> but I truly am informing the public. Mm-hmm. Just like if I go there with a sign, I hold that sign, and I hope that the jurors see it, but I also want to inform everybody who passes by, mm-hmm. everybody who goes into that building, all the traffic that goes by on the street. I want everybody to know this, because everybody should know this. 
I'm thinking 200 years ago, everybody did know it. A hundred right. years ago, pretty much everybody knew. But they've tried to squish this away from us. And we can bring it back by being open and honest and not be afraid. And, and not being afraid includes not being afraid to yield. When they threaten you, say, well, maybe I'm done for today. I can walk away. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty much have an attitude and, a, and, a, and a, a sense about you that's respectful and peaceful and uh, if you want to do battle, then that's a probably a different thing, and you maybe you can go to jail. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to, you, because when they say, when they come out, they don't come out and just say, we're going to grab all you guys and, and, and lock you all up. They, they usually come out and they will say, you guys need to move from here. Right, they always or, give a warning. Yeah, huh? they always give a warning. And one of the things is sometimes they'll come out very early on and they'll say, we want you to know that you're not allowed to obstruct the sidewalk. Well, okay, and then you can be respectful and say, good, we, we weren't planning on doing that, so thank you for that. You know, it's okay, we weren't going to block the sidewalk, and, and we won't. Mm -hmm. But that's where they originally come out and let you know, we're watching. And just be willing to back up. If they say, you, you, we perceive it that you're blocking the sidewalk, you might say, well, where is it better to go, or... Is there something, is there a way we can do it better? Because mm -hmm. we're not here to cause trouble. We're here just to give information. Yeah, when uh, Julian Heiklin, Jim Babb, and I were at the, the Philadelphia courthouse, the federal courthouse there for the first time, or at least it was my first time in, uh, let's see, it was April 2010, on two different occasions, um, guys came up to me in a threatening way, you know, these, these people in the costumes, and basically, you know, made threats about, you know, where, where I was, where I was, you know, that they didn't want me to be there. And I basically just said, you know, well, how far back would you like me to be? And, and that, you know, in those situations that worked, you know. Right. Now, if they, so if the thugs start to get a sense that all they have to come do is come out and say boo, and then we all back up they will just keep coming and saying boo and if we just keep backing up then we won't get there and then there will be some people that will say you know what i'm drawing the line and i'm going to jail mm. but you don't have to do that because people that don't want to don't do that just back up people who want to make the point and hold the ground well make sure there's cameras around because these guys can be pretty bad and then when you hold the ground you can maybe not just go to jail but they'll hurt you you know mm -hmm. And, and and it's been it's, I mean we've seen what they've done to people like Lauren Canario right ninety pound woman and they're the dragging her around it's like these guys are brutes right and they don't care who it is and mm -hmm. because to them they have some different view of the world they 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 think that we are like they are masters and we are to obey and it's it's really kind of sad because these guys are you know they've got an oath to uphold the Constitution and that. You know, I tell people, go and read the Constitution. It doesn't say anything about you or me. It says about them. That's mm. their rules. That's what they've agreed to. That's yeah. how they're supposed to behave. So uh, I, I was looking at the URLs you said. Uh, so it's nhjury.com. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, were you looking for the Fully Informed Jury Association? Was that what you were looking for? With well, the that, was one? The one, that was the one where I said that's a dot .org. Because the Fully Informed Jury dot .org doesn't exist, but... FIJA.org does exist. Oh, right, right. I'm sorry about that. Okay. No, I just wanted to make it clear for the listeners. Yeah. Yeah. FIJA.org. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. Sorry about that. So I, um, I think to sum it up, you know, um, the, the power of the juror is, is incredible. Uh, it can really have a huge effect for uh, justice and for, um, you know, protecting the the people from uh government aggression and it is possible to educate people about this without arrested without getting arrested and the kind of spirituality that you talk about john uh, that you've really dedicated your life to at this point it can be helpful can be extremely helpful for these kinds of things because we do so often get so angry about uh the the you know the 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 injustices that the government, um, you know, perpetrates on us. Um, but there, there are ways that we can, you know, we can, um, you know, we can change ourselves and we can change uh, the outside world for the better. 
What, what do you does that sound uh, about right to you, or what do you think? Absolutely. And you know, when when you're saying we're going to get ready to wrap it up, I want to touch on one thing. And sure, go right maybe, ahead. Maybe a forgiveness issue for a few people. Uh, we went to hand out to support somebody at a trial, and we were handing out literature, and somebody said, "Well, we should only hand out this NH jury one." And because it's too confusing for the jurors. And I go, yeah, that's what the prosecutor likes to tell you. The jurors are all dumb dumbs and they can't handle a lot of information. No, a variety of, a variety of pamphlets is good. Well, when it all shook loose, I think what it really was, somebody didn't want the Fiji brochures because they were mad at Fiji because they perceived that Fiji didn't support Julian Heichlin. Mm. And I said, Fiji is an organization with a structure, and they are, they can and they can't do certain things. They probably want to support Julian, but when he did something that goes against what their organization can allow, they have to say, well, we can't support that. Right. And it's not personal. But I said to the person, <laughs> so the guy said, I don't want to hand out those brochures because I don't support Fiji because they didn't support Julian. And the next day we were there, you know, because it's a two-day trial, and I said, Oh, I thought about that overnight. And, you know, you you perceive it as I'm supporting Fiji by giving these out. I, su- I perceive this as Fiji is helping me. I, they're mm-hmm. supporting me by giving this literature or making it available. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, before we wrap up, is... Sure, as take your time. Up, a really, really important thing for people, the granddaddy of the modern juror movement is a fellow by the name of Red Beckman. Hmm. And there are videos on YouTube of this guy. I think if you do Red Beckman uh, Truth, uh, you know, Truth About Juries, or Truth About Grand Jurors, you'll run into some videos, and this guy tells it. Oh, he's, he's a good storyteller, too, so he's a, a little bit entertaining and, uh, and, and really solid stuff. So he'd be like the granddaddy of this modern movement. He gave the idea to two fellows out in Montana, Larry Dodge and Don Doig, and it took them a few years before they got up and running with it, and they created Fiji. Mm-hmm. Uh, it came from Red Beckman. He used to actually uh, tour and, and do a lot of stuff, and he had a New Hampshire connection, but people can find that when they search for Red Beckman, and if they go deep enough in, then they'll know the New Hampshire connection because that's too long a story to get into today. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, Googled Red Beckman and a bunch of uh, uh, videos came up. So, so yeah, any listeners who, you know, they're, they're not long videos either. They're under 10 minutes. So, you know, any listeners who who's interested can just Google that and get more information. I think that is the... Red Beckman tells it in clear, precise... Uh, when he has those 10-minute videos, any one of them is good. Uh, some of them are, are, I guess, in sequence, and you probably tell by the number. Go and you know, watch a good, watch a good hour of of him doing this. You know, write down the series, and you'll mm-hmm. see it so clear. Once you see this stuff, you'll say, "How is it possible?" It, it will make so much sense. You'll think, "How, how the heck didn't we ever realize this?" <laughs> a couple of little tricks I'll mention before we go too. Sure. Uh, they tell us that we live in this free country, and we know this in part because we have such a fair system, and it's so fair that we are to, and here's the trick, we are to consider people innocent until proven guilty. Hmm. Now, there's a little subtlety. What's with the until? Mm -hmm. When you're a juror, think of unless, Hmm. right? The until part. They talk in language where they say the defendant, you are to hold the defendant. Well, when you're a juror or talk to people about this, think of what it is. It's the accused. He hasn't, he or she has not been, you should not think of them. Somebody's accusing somebody of something. You ought to look at at the accuser with suspicion. Hmm. Right? Yeah, and the the language is so important. And, you know, the the until makes it sound like it's a foregone conclusion. And, you know, you're just, uh, you know, you're just moving as a juror. You're just moving the machine, you know. You're just the cog in the machine. It's going to go that way. It's just you playing your part. It's, it's, and it's, when you start to look at these subtleties, it gets a little scary because it's not just in the juror stuff, but a lot of the government stuff and, and, and different places, too. Mm-hmm. There are little tricks to move you in a direction and think independently. Think in the direction. Uh, once somebody said that judges are allowed, because they talk about this is, 
you know, jur- uh, judges will sometimes overturn a verdict. Mm-hmm. A judge cannot overturn a verdict in the direction of uh, harming the person, but they can in the direction of mercy. Mm-hmm. So to think as in the, an independent person, I, I think one of the biggest things in this movement, and I, uh, it's another subtlety, but, but then it's not so subtle once you know it, we have used the word jury since the early days of this. Mm-hmm. Red Beckman included. Mostly we talk about jury. Mm-hmm. I think to transition so that in five years when we used, when we have these conversations, we're using the word juror whenever possible, including talking about a panel of jurors. So That's a great idea. To, to make people think as an individual mm-hmm. and take ownership, because the trick here, nowhere else, anywhere in government, are you as an individual... So people that don't like government and don't want to be involved, imagine this. You can go there on that day, and you can be, by yourself, making a difference. Mm -hmm. You alone, and it's the only place that I'm aware of where you alone can set someone free. You don't have to get elected. You don't have to spend a lot of money, you know, gas to get to the courthouse if you're, or or even as somebody who's informing the jurors. This is where... One individual, and it's intended, again, as I said, it's intended to be enormously difficult to do harm. The jurors are there to protect their neighbor. Mm -hmm. Stand firm. Don't be a sheep. Don't feel like you're getting pulled in. I have to go along to get along. Sometimes there'll be things where the other jurors will be going, you know, there's all of us, and then there's you, and we don't get to go home until you change. And then you can say to them, <laughs> you know what, guys? You don't get to go home until you change, because I'm standing firm. <laughs> and Or the other trick is they tell you that you should try to find a verdict, a unanimous verdict. Well, should means one thing, must is not what they're saying. Mm. But they like to use the subtlety, and they will say it firmly that you should try to find a unanimous verdict. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to find... This is where it's intended that the one juror out of all can say that person's free to go home. Hmm. So um, you're a pastor, so, uh, you know, as our our final bit, you know, as we wrap up, can you leave us with one spiritual message that you think will be especially, perhaps the most helpful... To, to our listeners? The most helpful thing in all the world for inner and outer peace, if you want peace, learn to forgive, practice on the little things. When you trip on the cat, forgive the cat. Don't worry about forgiving the person that did big harm. Over the years, you'll get better. You maybe can never forgive the person that punched you in the nose, but you'll get closer to it, and you may even go beyond it. I recently said to somebody... I'm to the point where I can forgive the devil himself because <laughs> then that takes away all the evil power. Hmm. Forgiveness is the master key that will unlock a lot of the harm because you can't undo the physical harm. There's things that can't be turned back, but it stops you from carrying it. it it's not your burden when somebody does bad stuff to you. Don't accept that burden of of resentment, because it will hurt you. It will hurt you inside, it will hurt your health, it will hurt your spirit. Don't let them do that to you. Find peace, find forgiveness. That's my message to the world. Please don't tread on others is the, is the thing out here. That's the church message. And my personal mission is to teach forgiveness. It has worked in my life, and I'll guarantee you it will work in yours. Mm, excellent message. John Connell, a uh, pastor of the Peaceful Assembly Church in Grafton, New Hampshire, uh, one of the centers of Free State Project activism in, uh, in the Shire. John, thanks so much for, for talking with us today. I've really enjoyed our conversation. I have too. Great to hear, for, hear you again, and I look forward to talking in the near future. Yeah, me too. Peace.